2021 has been a tough year and yet throughout the year you as a business community have continued to embody the future focus, the outward looking nature and the international relevance of the UK Singapore partnership. I absolutely love the annual business awards. For me they embody both excellence and community and what's not to like about that? The awards reflect the commitment of UK and Singapore businesses continuously striving for excellence. I'm encouraged to see that many fellow Chamber members are continuing their pursuit of excellence even during these challenging times. For me, the annual Business Awards really is an opportunity to bring the community together. So the whole process of you reflecting internally around what you have achieved through the year, through that submission in, through the judging process, um, and really it's, it's enabling you as an entrant uh, to really showcase the best of your business, actually to the really wide business community. In 2020, I won the award for Individual Contributor of the Year. I was absolutely stunned to win the award last year. I wasn't aware I'd been put up for it, and it was very humbling. Given the challenges that I think we've, we've all had, it's been really important to ensure that we do keep the momentum of celebrating business success. Too often we just move on to the next thing and just the act of writing it down, the act of coming together and being able to talk about it, it's just fantastic. It's like climbing a mountain, isn't it? It's, it's taking that opportunity to just take a pause and look at where you've come from and just admire the scenery that's around you because there's still going to be a challenge going on there. So this is a great opportunity to press that pause button and really celebrate um, some of the brilliant achievements from the community. For me, the awards are that ability for you to stand out from the crowd. It's about you, it's about your evening, and it's about the quality and the effort and the enthusiasm you've put to make your business successful over the last 12 months. You have already seen the shortlist of the finalists, and I'd like to say congratulations to everybody who made it through the stiff competition to get onto the finalist list. I'd like to congratulate all finalists for their achievements. Regardless of whether you end up with an award or not, you're all winners and your efforts will go far in inspiring others to do so. I want to say good luck to all of you as we wait to find out who has scooped the awards this year. Coming up tonight, we've got special guests, we've got prizes and we've got music in what's really going to be a very interactive evening and I hope you can join us for the duration. Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to the finalists, judges, partners and distinguished guests. My name is Sharon Jeet Lale and it's a delight to once again be your host this evening. Welcome to the 22nd Annual Business Awards for 2021. I would like to congratulate the 39 nominees joining us tonight who represent the best of business here in Singapore. It's the second year we faced challenges on a global scale, and yet tonight we celebrate the inspirational stories of business success. Our finalists were selected from a pool of outstanding submissions and will be joining us live on screen throughout the evening as I reveal the winners. Now, the Chamber would like to express their gratitude and thanks to our partners this evening, as without their support, we could not continue with the Business Awards initiative. In particular, we'd like to thank Prudential Assurance Singapore for their support as title partners and for their continued support around the Chamber's wider longevity initiative. This evening's virtual ceremony comes to you live from where I am with the team of Asia Works, with finalists joining me on screen from across the island, ready for their winning announcements. Hello, finalists. Now, throughout the evening, there will also be an opportunity for you, our live audience, to win fantastic prizes in the lucky draw, thanks to Shangri-La Singapore, the Hari Hong Kong, and the Datai in Langkawi. We're delighted to be joined this evening as well by Athlete Ambassadors of BP Singapore, Nur Shahida Alim and To Wei Sung, who recently returned from the Tokyo Paralympic Games. Shahida and Wei Sung will share a few words on their amazing experience in Japan and what it takes to be a Paralympian. 
And stay with us for the final category as well of the evening, where you, the audience, will be the judging committee, casting your votes and deciding who the winner of the UK Impact in Singapore category will be. And closing the ceremony in style, we welcome back Song Division Asia, which consists of music facilitator Christo Alexander and his band, Hello Christo. And you can Hello, see him Sharon waving G. right there. Christo, of course, will be listening closely throughout the evening and he'll create a unique show-stopping summary song to celebrate all those involved in tonight's annual business awards. In the meantime, please allow me to introduce the president of the British Chamber of Commerce in Singapore, Richard Warburton, joining us from Eden Hall, the British High Commissioner's residence, to say a few words. Over to you, Richard. Sharon Jeet, thank you very much and a good evening to everybody. High Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, members, guests and friends, a very warm welcome to the 22nd Annual Business Awards once again coming to you live and directly to the comfort of your homes. I know that we all wanted to get dressed up and to meet physically for our usual gala dinner with the red carpet treatment for the finalists. However, we know this is not possible. But with the support of our friends at AsiaWorks, we bring you a fantastic award show to celebrate your successes and achievements. I do hope that you have a beverage of your choice, ready to toast all the finalists and the winners. I've spoken to many of our members over the past year, and the one thing which stands out for me has been the real sense of community, sharing experiences, helping each other, making introductions, just being there. The British community has continued to show that natural resilience is in our DNA, although I think we are all slightly frazzled and a bit tired. I know that it has not been easy, and that the light at the end of the tunnel has at times got dimmer and indeed flickered. But Saturday's travel news was positive, although the ongoing uncertainty has impacted us all, both at a personal and a business level. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for being there, for helping each other, the Chamber team, the people in your networks, to cope and to remain strong through all that we've been facing. As many of you know, the Chamber and the High Commission have been actively engaging with government stakeholders, sharing feedback, concerns and opinions, and doing all that we can to keep things moving to support the British and the business communities. This has not always been easy or visible, but I'm pleased to see the influence that we have as a Chamber and the resulting outcomes. Despite the challenges, much has been achieved by working and being together. Turning to trade, the UK has been making great strides in shaping future growth in our region with bilateral and regional trade negotiations. These trade enablers include the UK-Singapore Free Trade Agreement, ASEAN Dialogue Partner Status, and the ongoing negotiations around CPTPP and the DEA. All are key for future economic stability and growth. We look forward to continuing to work with the High Commissioner, Cara Owen, Her Majesty's Trade Commissioner, Natty Black, Steve Firstbrook at the Department for International Trade, and their teams on these important trade developments, which will benefit the Chamber membership and your businesses. Turning to the awards, the awards tonight are about you. It is a celebration of all that you have achieved, and we have some fantastic stories to share. Year on year, the quality of the submissions keeps getting better, and the selection process for the judges keeps getting harder. So I'd like to say a very special thank you to this year's judges for their efforts. From providing flexible recruitment services for businesses during the pandemic, pushing for net carbon zero, and even developing a whole of country open access platform that tracks the number of available hospital beds and ventilators. The variety of success stories is fantastic to see, and I wish every one of you could win the awards that you are nominated for. I hope for those who entered the awards, the moment of reflection in preparing the submissions enabled you to recognize what you have achieved. 
as we all run harder, it often feels like we don't have time to look back and celebrate success, which is so important. Tonight is all about recognizing these achievements and publicly celebrating together. A huge congratulations to everyone and best of luck to the finalists. A big thank you to our sponsors for this evening, including Prudential as title partner for your generous support. This is much appreciated. To the Chamber team, who have worked tirelessly throughout the year, including the organisation of tonight's event, a big thank you on behalf of the whole membership. Please enjoy the evening, have fun, share in the successes of the finalists and the winners, and I promise that Cara and I will not dance during the closing credits this year. It is now my pleasure to welcome our patron, Her Excellency Cara Owen, the British High Commissioner to Singapore, to say a few words. Cara. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you this evening uh, presenting the British Chamber's 22nd Annual Business Awards. When I was speaking to you virtually last year from this very same spot, I think most of us truly believed that by now we would have moved back to a state of affairs that felt something closer to normal and that we'd be getting together physically to celebrate this year's awards. I know that I'd certainly love nothing more than to be seeing all of you personally into inviting you this year's winners to celebrate at Eden Hall, which, by the way, is crying out to host a big party. One of the biggest frustrations for me over the past year has been the limitations on how we engage in person. That doesn't suit my nature particularly or my role. The Chamber and we are looking at how we can address that soon, uh, bringing us closer together while also satisfying the Singapore government's restrictions. So do watch this space. In the meantime, I never fail to be impressed and I'm super proud uh, of the resolve that all of you in the British business community continue to show. The high quality of the nominations for tonight's award are, is a real testament to that. And that's also why I know that whatever challenges the ongoing situation throw at you, the Chamber and its members continue to rise to them and make the most of the opportunities that are out there. And despite the frustrations that we all feel and the obstacles we continue to face, those opportunities uh, continue to grow. Since we met last year, we have signed the UK-Singapore Free Trade Agreement, ensuring that UK business uh, maintains enhanced access to our largest trading partner in ASEAN, and safeguarding a gateway for our firms to one of the most important regions in the world. We have formally launched a digital economy agreement with Singapore, making us the first European country to meet this milestone. Negotiations are underway. We thank you for your feedback about them. And our aim is for the agreement to simplify procedures for innovative UK companies here and also with Singapore as ASEAN's technology hub, put the UK in prime permission, uh, permission? position to set global standards in data, digital trade facilitation, cybersecurity, AI and other emerging technologies. The UK has also achieved ASEAN dialogue partner status, which we'll use to advance our economic cooperation at a regional as well as bilateral level. And we continue to seek further opportunities for our businesses through our close work with Singapore. As next year's chair, as we take forward our application to join CPTPP, membership of which will provide British businesses with an unparalleled gateway to the Pacific region. More immediately, I'm thrilled to tell you that the Royal Navy's flagship vessel, its brand new aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth, will be sailing into Singapore next week. We won't, unfortunately, be able to host a giant party on board. That surely would have been the highlight of all of our social calendars. But we will nonetheless be making full use of the visit to promote the UK's partnership proposition to this region. And I think that the visit of the carrier is a perfect example of the enduring strategic partnership between the UK and Singapore, and of the UK's renewed commitment to the Asia Pacific region and our real impact here in Singapore. The government here has done its very best to ensure that the carrier's visit can go ahead. It simply would not have been possible had our relationship not been as strong as it is. And that strong relationship enables us to work really closely with Singapore across a range of topics, including, for example, COP26, which will take place in Glasgow in November. As our Prime Minister recently said ahead of the, UK, um, the UN General Assembly in New York, 
World leaders need to come up with ambitious commitments that will set the planet on the right path to net zero. I'd like to really thank and uh, congratulate the Chamber again for its commitment to leading on this sustainability in business and your proactive support for UK's, um, uh, UK's climate change ambitions through your fully integrated and imaginative road to net zero campaign. As Richard said earlier, one of the most important issues we've been discussing with Singapore uh, and have been discussing over uh, all of the recent year, necessarily behind the scenes, if you'll understand, is the return to uh, safe travel between our countries as soon as is possible. We've been really conscious of the stresses and strains travel restrictions have put not only on your businesses, but also on your family lives. While supporting health objectives, I have consistently made this point to Singapore ministers um, in a way that is entirely consistent with the messages that Richard and others at the British Chamber and in the British community have been passing to. So I was delighted to see that travellers from the UK can now apply to SHM at home and have a shorter quarantine. We continue to do all that we can to ease travel uh, for you as the situation allows, including taking forward discussions about a vaccine travel lane. I'm convinced that when the restrictions are finally lifted, we have a really solid foundation that will ensure our business, security, cultural and education relationships continue to go from strength to strength. The strength of tonight's award nominations are brilliant examples of the depth and breadth of our companies here. And I'm looking forward to congratulating the winners. And in particular, to that moment when we announce who will claim the popular prize of UK impact in Singapore. I couldn't end without paying tribute to our two amazing Paralympian guests of honours, Noor Shahid Alim and Towei Soong. You and all of the competitors at the Paralympics in Tokyo are truly an inspiration to us all. And it's a really special honor to be spending the evening uh, with you both this evening. Finally, a shout out to the astonishing British Chamber team. I really think you are the best British Chamber of Commerce team uh, that is available to any members anywhere. Thank you for everything that you've done for this evening. Thank you, Cara, very much for your thoughts and insights there. The relationship between the British High Commission, uh, the Department for International Trade and the British Chamber is really important and highly valued. It is really pleasing to see how the relationship has grown during the course of the last year as we have jointly navigated the ongoing challenges facing the British and business communities. Thank you for your continued support and guidance. I must also say thank you to Sharon Jeet, who continues to give her time and expertise as MC for the awards. Thank you. Sharon Jeet and Cara both mentioned our special guests earlier, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing from our guests around their Olympic journeys um, and their experiences. So um, in closing, I'm now very pleased to welcome Go Cheng Kiet, Chief Customer Officer Prudential Singapore, who's going to share a few words. Um, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Her Excellency Carol Owen, British High Commissioner to Singapore, Mr. Richard Warburton, President, British Chamber of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to commemorate with you the achievements of British and Singapore companies at the 22nd Annual Business Awards. Being the title partner for this awards again this year is uh, meaningful to Prudential because of our dual heritage. The UK and Singapore have long-standing business ties. The Prudential itself is deep-seated in this history. Founded in London in 1848 and established our business in Singapore in 1931. It's also meaningful to Prudential because uh, this year actually marks our 90th year operations in Singapore. When we opened our very first branch in Raffles Square all those years ago, Prudential had just one, three staff and one representative offering general fire and motor insurance. Today, we are a leading life insurer offering your products and professional advisory through our 5,000 financial consultants and bank partners. We have close to 1 million customers and our 1,200 employees make it their goal to create excellent customer experiences and to help people get the most out of life. 
Many of the chamber members and finalists today have similar histories and long-standing ties to Singapore. And it's a pleasure to support the deepening of such ties through these awards. With people in Singapore living longer, the need to continue working and earning to support a fulfilling retirement continues to grow, along with the desire by older workers to remain meaningfully engaged and contributing to society. Businesses are well placed to be both a beneficiary and as well as a supporter of such a longevity trend. Prudential currently partners with over 2,300 corporates and small medium-sized um, enterprises to make health, wealth, and wellness an integral part of their workplace. And we'll be delighted to work with members of the chamber to continue to make working in Singapore a productive and meaningful experience for workers. Our partnership will be especially important as we face the challenges of COVID together and transform our businesses in this new norm. So a lot of good work has been seen. It's already been done in this regard by our finalists and from fresh sustainability efforts to using technology to innovate and support for employees as they transition to hybrid working. Every finalist has his own unique journey and growth story. So today, we honour and celebrate the people and teams behind these stories. Those with clear vision, a strong sense of purpose, and a commitment to the pursuit of excellence. Congratulations to all our finalists. I would now like to hand the time over to Sharajit to start the award ceremony. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much as well to Kara Owen and Richard Warburton for joining us uh, this evening. And now it's the time you've all been waiting for. It's uh, time to begin the award proceedings. And our first category of the evening recognizes the business transformation of the year. This award recognizes the organization which has made the greatest strides in transforming its business operation in the past 12 months into a cost-efficient, agile, and customer-centric model. Let's take a look at the nominees. The nominees for Business Transformation of the Year are Nexia TS. In 2019, Nexia TS embarked on the journey to transform its key business processes, one of which is vouching, a crucial step in audit that's highly laborious and time-consuming. With the use of data analytics and optical character recognition tools, the process automation has successfully freed up 50% of the auditor's time and costs, thus enabling more analytical work to be conducted productively to improve service deliverables in each audit engagement. Prudential Assurance Company, Singapore. Prudential is one of Singapore's top life insurers and has been serving its financial and protection needs for 90 years. As part of its commitment to help customers live well for longer, Prudential launched its Pulse by Prudential mobile application to help Singaporeans better plan for the health and wealth needs of their families. Scream Technologies. A pure artificial intelligence company, Screen Technologies is also one of the world's biggest digital behavior aggregators. One Market is the company's flagship solution and is the world's first AI-enabled media exchange. Cookieless and PII-free and GDPR compliant, it merges all of Scream's tech stack layers, delivering an optimized end-to-end -end solution that seamlessly connects the right audience with the right digital destinations when and where behaviors occur. 33 Talent Singapore 33 Talent is a specialist talent consultancy. After COVID-19 put a stop to most recruitment, 33 Talent pivoted and became the HR partner and outplacement program provider for two major government upskilling projects. 33 Talent implemented new software, created new roles and hired new staff to meet the program needs and help empower over 1,600 learners. Rebel and Soul. Against All Odds is the name of the global number one hit song by Phil Collins. And also the three words that succinctly summed up Rebel and Soul this past 12 months. The boutique brand experience agency, whose business was 98% live events going into COVID, lost over 82% of their confirmed business by the first quarter, yet managed to retain their team, 
pick up four new clients and pivot to become a full-service creative marketing agency with eight awards already under its belt this year. What a way to defy the odds. Well, I'm sure you'll agree they're all great nominees, but there can only be one winner, and that person is in my envelope right here. Drum roll, please. The winner of the Business Transformation of the Year Award is... Scream Technologies. A big congratulations to you. Uh, thank you so much. It's a huge testament to, to the team, 180 people. Uh, we're in nine cities now. During COVID, we had to completely change our, our business model. And uh, what's really exciting about how we're developing is that uh, really proud to announce that uh, we're setting up an R&D center in Singapore to be a pure AI company. Uh, as a pure AI company, we're really now starting to focus on different applications in different areas. And uh, also very proud to announce that we'll be opening our first office uh, uh, in, in, in Europe and it's going to be in London and it's going to be uh, towards the end of the year. So even though COVID has been a, a really tough time for all of us, uh, we were the 12th fastest growing company in Singapore last year. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're progressing on once it's been hard. Uh, but look, business transformation, you just have to grow. So thank you very much. Well said, and a big congratulations once again to you, Ian Chapman and Screen Technologies. The next category of the evening recognizes the Customer Service Provider of the Year. The winner demonstrated evidence of a customer-centric business culture with ongoing employee training and process review. Let's take a look at the nominees. The nominees for Customer Service Provider of the Year are Dulwich College, Singapore. Dulwich College Singapore is a premium brand in the highly competitive international school market in Singapore. Underpinning the college's success in quickly establishing itself as a top-tier international school in only seven years of operation has been an unrelenting focus on the end-to-end -end customer experience or the Dulwich experience, as is more commonly referred to. 8Build Private Limited 8Build want to make a difference to an industry that needs fresh ideas to make the whole process more cost-effective and less adversarial for their clients. To do this, they provide clients and professional teams with flexibility and choice in a tailor-made range of construction services designed to give them exactly what is required to successfully deliver any project. 33 Talent Singapore Private Limited 33 Talent is a specialist talent consultancy based in Singapore. Their award-winning product, Subscription, provides clients on-demand access to experts in the human resources industry who can implement embedded talent acquisition, onboarding, HR management, payroll and employer branding services. These are all delivered to 33 Talent's high standard at a pleasing price point. International Orthopaedic Clinic International Orthopaedic Clinic was founded by British-born and trained orthopaedic surgeon, Dr. Alan Chung. Their mission is to provide the best customer service and clinical results to patients of all nationalities, creeds and cultures. They are adaptable to meet the needs of every patient and are constantly improving their service based on regular patient feedback. Well, I've got the name of the winner in this envelope. Drum roll, please. The winner of the Customer Service Provider of the Year Award is 8Build. Congratulations to 8Build. The construction process has some set deliverables that focus on safety, quality, cost, and program. Hitting these targets and going beyond that to provide our very bespoke white glove service is a real differentiator and something that we're really, really proud of. Receiving this award will really help us promote our offer 
the wider customer audience in Singapore and beyond. So thank you. This means so much. This award really goes out to all our brilliant eight builders. So thank you again. Fantastic. A big congratulations. Thanks for that, Andy Barr. Now, the next category of the evening is uh, actually sponsored by Barclays Bank, and it recognizes diversity and inclusion. And we're looking at the diversity and inclusion champion of the year. This award recognizes organizations which promote progressive equality and inclusion values from the boardroom to the shop floor and to the demonstrable benefit of all stakeholders. Let's take a look at the nominees. The nominees for Diversity and Inclusion Champion of the Year are IHS Market. At IHS Market, their vision is to be the customer's leading source for critical information, analytics and insight. Everything they do is underpinned by six values, accountability, innovation, customer focus, integrity, inclusiveness and partnership. By cultivating a diverse, equitable and inclusive culture, HIS markets celebrate authenticity and innovation to strive to better reflect and serve the people and the communities in which they live and work. JDX Consulting Private Limited. JDX is a global specialist consulting business focused on resource augmentation and domain consulting. JDX is proud to be committed to a long-term transformative journey of diversity and inclusion. Diversity in JDX's talent backgrounds, cultures, identities and ethnicities help foster diversity in decision-making and problem-solving. This will always be central to JDX's success and continued growth. Arab Singapore Private Limited Arab is an independent global firm in the built environment with over 450 staff in Singapore hailing from 28 countries. For its founding aims, values and purpose of shaping a better world, it was included in Fortune magazine's inaugural Change the World list that do well by doing good. Arab does not shy away from the uncomfortable questions in the workplace. It continues to take steps from the global to local levels to promote a safe and inclusive workplace culture for all. Standard Chartered Bank Taking a stand on diversity and inclusion, Standard Chartered is committed to building an environment where employees feel safe, empowered and respected, regardless of their background. Ultimately, it's about bringing the best out of their people so they can deliver their best to their clients and the communities they serve. As the only significantly rooted foreign bank here, Standard Chartered remains committed to Singapore, a place they've called home for over 160 years. Well, I have to say that is my kind of award, but there can only be one winner and uh, that person is in the envelope. The winner, drum roll please, for the diversity and inclusive uh, champion of the year, it goes to Arab Singapore. moment for us to be awarded as diversity and inclusion champion of the year. Diversity has been always our core value where our people come first in every decision we make. Our multicultural and multiracial diverse workforce brings differences and unique strengths to our work every day and with that understanding we continue to explore, challenge ourselves and find our blind spots to make our a safe and inclusive work environment. We are on a journey and continue to learn how to create inclusion by listening to and understanding our the lived experiences of our people. Awards such as this provide a platform to create both internal and external conversations to our firm around the importance of inclusion for all. Thank you very much. Well, a big congrats to you, Eka from Arab. Well, we've got our next category, and uh, this is the one that recognizes Employer of the Year. It uh, recognizes organizations that have created a stimulating and supportive work environment and really have a genuine commitment to the welfare of its employees, resulting in high staff satisfaction levels and well-motivated ambitions, as well as an integrated workforce. Let's take a look at those nominees. 
The nominees for Employer of the Year. Eight Build Private Limited. The approach of treating others as we wish to be treated ourselves promotes making a real difference to eight builders. They strongly believe in providing an opportunity to own an equity share in the business, allowing the employees to truly be the masters of their own identity, enabling eight build to implement some very meaningful differences. JDX Consulting Private Limited. Formed in 2012, JDX is a global market-leading specialist consulting business focused on resource augmentation and domain consulting for investment banks, financial market infrastructure and technology acceleration, underpinned by a collaborative can-do culture. JDX APEC is a strategic growth hub of the global firm and operates with nearly 100 employees. Arab Singapore Private Limited for 75 years, Arup has been leading some of the most iconic and challenging design and engineering projects worldwide. The independent, employee-owned firm continues to be guided by its founding aims and values that set out to achieve socially valuable outcomes. People are why Arup exists and how it lives out its purpose. Staff welfare and well-being is as such highly prioritized, enabling the firm to stretch possibilities and make a real difference in work it does. Well, they sound like uh, some great employers, but there can only be one Employer of the Year award. And the winner is, drum roll please, once again, Arab Singapore. Congratulations. On behalf of Arab, I would like to thank the British Chamber and judges for the recognition. It has no doubt been a testing time for businesses as we try to build back better from global challenges, including the pandemic and climate crisis. As an independent, employee-owned firm, uh, our strength is our people and we remain committed to our people and we aspire to bring out the best through better workplace culture and policies to support our staff. I would like to dedicate this award particularly to our clients, our collaborators, our people, committees, and to all 450 members of our Singapore office for striving towards our common purpose to shape a better world. Thank you. Well, Tan Yung Heng, fantastic job. Of course, you are the Singapore leader. Once again, a big congratulations to Arab. Now, before we move on with the second half of the ceremony, I'm going to invite Christo Alexander and his band, Song Division, to say hello and to announce the first two lucky winners of tonight's lucky draw prize. Christo, you've got their names there? I do, I do. And um, we're really excited. We've already got some of the song written and we can't wait to perform the ABA summary song anthem at the end. But firstly, a little musical tribute. Three, four. I love lucky draws, so pull out my name from the lucky draw box. If you're gonna win a prize, you can share it with me. You can share it with me or you can share it with our lovely friends. Anyway, without further ado, uh, the lucky draw number one. The first prize is the Shangri-La High Tea. Can I have the envelope, please? And the drum roll, please. The winner is... Jackson Oh, Congratulations, Jackson. Congratulations. We'll be in touch with you to give you your prize a little bit later on. And then the next prize is the Hari Hong Kong, which is a lovely stay in Hong Kong. So looking forward to that. Hopefully you, you win it, uh, which is lovely. There it is on screen now. And uh, can I have the envelope, please? Thank you. And the drum roll. The winner is... James Corbishley. Congratulations, James. And we'll continue writing our song. So uh, back to you, Sharon Jit. I really like that song. And yes, those winners should be sharing their awards. <laughs> but fantastic. We'll be hearing a lot more from you later on in the show. 
but I've got to get on with the next category of the evening, and it is um, Individual Contribution of the Year. And this is an award that recognizes a remarkable individual for achievements in the workplace and all the community over the last uh, 12 months. Judges were particularly interested in the impact and results of the nominees' activities. So let's take a look at those nominees. The nominees for Individual Contribution of the Year are Tim Armstrong, Head of Occupier Services and Commercial Agency, Knight Frank, Asia Pacific. Tim Armstrong is the Head of Occupier Services and Commercial Agency for Knight Frank, Asia Pacific. Moving to Singapore for this role less than three years ago, Tim has made strides in growing the regional business through his leadership, resulting in significant client wins, a more comprehensive occupier service offering, recruitment of top talent, and more effective collaboration across local offices. Joel Carpenter, St. James Place Wealth Management Asia. Joel Carpenter is the Divisional Director, Marketing for St. James Place Asia, a career marketer, Joel leads and is responsible for driving St. James's Place's business development, marketing and communications activities in Hong Kong, Singapore and China. Through his various campaigns and community engagements, he's played a key role in promoting the value of financial advice, raising awareness around issues of financial well-being and empowering individuals with greater financial literacy and education. Catherine Wolfe business owner and managing director of 33 Talent Singapore. Catherine Wolfe is the founder and MD of 33 Talent, a specialist talent consultancy. She supports the local industry as the local director of APS Co. This year, she has worked pro bono to help Image Mission hire, train and engage talent for their non-profit and volunteered with Talent Trust. She's also a certified coach and has supported many leaders through a difficult year. Nicola Hewitt is the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office's climate attaché in Singapore, spearheading a complex, highly politically visible and critically important cross-HMG effort to deliver the UK's climate objectives, including COP26 policy coordination. This translates to a plethora of engagements with the government of Singapore and a wide range of stakeholders, including businesses, civil society and youth groups to advance both nations' shared objectives in combating climate change. And in her spare time, balancing mentorship and committee responsibilities for Singapore's oldest theatre company. Well, I'm sure you'll all agree those were some incredible individual contributions, but there can only be one individual contributor of the year, and the award goes to... Nicola Hewitt, the Climate and Energy uh, Attaché from the British High Commission. Congratulations, Nicola. I am honestly so shocked <laughs> and so chuffed. Um, I'm just a humble civil servant um, delivering behind the scenes. So it's so refreshing to be recognized and nominated. Thank you so much, Bridget. Um, I think that not many people really know what a climate change and energy attache does. So, you know, this whole process has, has shed some light on that, which is great. Um, and a big shout out to my attache colleagues in the region. Um, and I, I just a big thank you to my team in Singapore, to Tom, Lauren, Isabel, to Cara, the High Commissioner. You are so supportive of me um, and I wouldn't be able to deliver half the things that I deliver without your kind you know, support and faith. Um, and all your mentorship and coaching. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bridget. Jam. Oh, you're very welcome and well done, Nicola. Now, the next category of the evening is supported by Globalization Partners and recognizes the uh, Startup of the Year. Now, this is an award that uh, really looks at outstanding startups and judges looked for evidence of the customer value proposition, really an outstanding growth trajectory in business results and outcomes, and also their social impact. So let's have a look 
at those nominees. The nominees for Startup of the Year are Aspire is the leading all-in-one financial operating system designed for growing businesses in Southeast Asia. The Aspire business account helps business owners save time and money through one account for all their financial needs, providing access to multi-currency payments, corporate cards, payables and receivables management, credit facilities and more, all fully integrated with modern business software. SpeedDoc Private Limited. SpeedDoc is an innovative healthcare startup that has built a patient-centric, digitalized platform, enabling them to support patients across Singapore and Malaysia. Their remarkable model of care, medical and technological capabilities is set to redefine the healthcare landscape, enabling a new degree of accessibility and affordability. Established in 2018, its revenue has seen an estimated 300% growth. Lion Cat Films Private Limited. Lion Cat Films is a video production company specializing in making films that will make your brand look beautiful. Counting TWGT, Marina Bay Sands, Audi, and Como Hotels as their clients, Lion Cat has doubled revenues in two years, grown from a team of two to a team of 10, and had a remarkable 84% new business win success rate. Activo Labs Private Limited. The Activo digital health platform has been adopted by Fortune 1000 companies across 14 countries to improve the health and well being of populations in a fun and meaningful way. Founded in 2017 in Singapore, Activo takes a scientific approach to empower long and healthy lives by enabling a healthy physical lifestyle, sleep, nutrition, and well being. And the winner for Startup of the Year is, drumroll, Speed Doc. Congratulations. Thank you so much for this award and we are really honored and privileged to receive this, especially among all the successful and admirable startups. And thank you so much for recognizing our efforts. Uh, really sincere thanks to the amazing customers, hospitals we've been working with and partners who've been giving us the incredible support. We are really extremely grateful to our staff and management for displaying this tenacity and uh, supporting the community, especially through these tough times of uh, COVID-19. Uh, throughout the thrusts and efforts. Moving forward, we really hope to continue redefining the healthcare landscape through medical and technological capabilities, which can really help to build newer models of healthcare to offer a new degree of accessibility and affordability. So thank you so much, Brit Chem, for this wonderful opportunity and uh, real congratulations to all participants. Yeah, and a big congratulations to you as well, uh, Dr. Shravan Verman of Speed Doc. Now moving on to our next category of the evening and it is Sustainability Champion of the Year. It's an award that recognizes organizations with an effective, comprehensive and purpose-driven, responsible business program that is credible, results-driven and addresses the core business function and as well reinforces the commitment to operating in an economically, socially and environmentally responsible manner. That's a big ask, isn't it? Well, let's take a look at the nominees. The nominees for Sustainability Champion of the Year are Diageo. As a global leader in beverage alcohol, Diageo believes that for its business to be sustainable, it needs to create enduring value and positively impact the communities in which Diageo lives, works, sources and sells. The Spirit of Progress 2030 is Diageo's 10-year action plan to help create a more inclusive and sustainable world through promoting positive drinking, inclusion and diversity and grain-to-glass sustainability. Edible Garden City Edible Garden City is a social enterprise that champions the grow your own food movement. It believes that growing our own food connects us with nature and cultivates a sense of community. The 
company has activated more than 260 underutilized spaces in schools, homes and businesses into urban farms. It also operates a closed loop farm and conducts urban farming education. Sentosa Golf Club Sentosa Golf Club is widely regarded as the most sustainable golf club in the world, implementing numerous environmental initiatives through its Keep It Green and Game On campaigns. The club became the first golf club in the world to sign the UN Sports for Climate Action initiative and has pledged to become the first ever carbon neutral golf venue by 2022. Keller Foundations Southeast Asia Keller Group Established in 1860 is the world's largest geotechnical contractor. It has a rich 50-year history in Singapore. From Changi Airport to Jurong Island, from Sentosa to Gardens by the Bay, Keller proudly prepares the sustainable foundations safely for developments across Singapore today and for generations to come. With a successful combination of efficient technology and in-house developed state-of-the-art equipment, Keller offers a low-carbon construction following responsible consumption and production while building a better world. NetWest Markets Sustainability is at the heart of everything we do, whether it's providing green finance products, encouraging green transformation, supporting customers through COVID, championing education in sustainable finance, or ensuring our own operations are energy efficient, NatWest is determined to lead the way in addressing climate change. NatWest is proud to be a principal sponsor of COP26 in Glasgow next month. And the winner of the Sustainability Champion of the Year Award is... Well, I'll tell you, my husband will be thrilled because I lose him every Sunday there. Sentosa Golf Club! Big congratulations. Wow, I'm uh, I'm shocked and thrilled with the uh, all the talent and and contributions of everybody. You know, everybody was a winner tonight, uh, but we're uh, we're very humbled and excited to have this uh, to have this accolade and award. Thank you to the uh, British Chamber for recognizing us. Um, it is uh, it's a real journey when you look at sustainability and the things that we're doing uh, at the golf club and having been recognized for that uh, is uh, is something that I'm just uh, I'm really proud of my team and the hard work that we've put in for the last decade at getting to this point it's just the beginning and uh, we hope to continue to uh, push the ceiling in in sustainability so thank you very much and thank you everybody big congrats there Andrew Johnston the GM of the Sentosa Golf Club and a big congratulations to all our winners thus far this evening. Of course, we've been having a, a great time. We've been speeding through those awards. Uh, but at this stage, we're going to pause a little because I'm really delighted to welcome the next two individuals. Uh, it's Noor Shahida Alim and Wei Sung To to the ceremony. Now, Shahida is a Team Singapore two-time Paralympic compound archer, and her road to being an elite athlete began on her first debut in the ASEAN Para Games in 2015, where she claimed two goals for the individual and mixed teams events. She defended her individual title at ASEAN Para Games in 2017 and competed in both the Rio Paralympics in 2016, where she ranked seventh, as well as the recent Tokyo Paralympics, where she ranked ninth. Shahida is currently ranked number one for her category in the World Archery Federation. Welcome, Shahida. Next, we also have Wei Sung, who is a, a Singaporean Paralympian who has won medals at the Commonwealth Games and the Asian Para Games, as well as the Pan Pacific Para Swimming Championships and the ASEAN Para Games. Recently, he competed in the 2020 Paralympic Games in Tokyo, representing Singapore and attaining fourth place in the 50-meter S7 Butterfly Finals. Welcome to you as well. How wonderful to have you both on our show. And it's a, a real delight for me as a Singaporean. I'm so proud that we have such incredible individuals like you representing the country at these incredible Olympics. Uh, 
So first off, let's start with you, Shahida. What got you interested in archery? Uh, for me, um, I started um, archery when I was 18 and I got to know about the sport through the Singapore Disability uh, Expo and it was organized by the Singapore Dis Disability Sports Council. So I remembered going down there uh, in the expo and I tried all the sports that was available and uh, archery uh, seems to be more suited for me. Um, so during that time, uh, they had an archery demo and I tried it out and um, I managed to see all my arrows at the center. And uh, it would give me that sense of achievement. Um, and I also, um, you know, soon, soon I got to know that um, archery is uh, more of a masculine sport and, um, and not a lot of females actually join archery at that time. So I wanted to do something that was uniquely for me. Um, so here I am doing archery. <laughs> Fantastic. What a great story. And uh, Wei Sung, I'm going to ask you the same question as well. What attracted you to swimming as a competitive sport? Well, when I was younger, I think I have a, a personal story to say that. When, um, when I was younger, I found a lot of joy in swimming simply for the fun of it. And it was only as I got older that I realized that I was good at it and when put into a competition setting, I could, uh, I could do fairly well at it. And so that, that was that kind of feedback loop that encouraged me to continue pursuing the sport, mostly for the fun, but also, you know, having that positive feedback of being able to compete and being able to win. And, you know, taking that further all, all the way to the Paralympic Games has been a real treat. And I'm very grateful for the opportunities uh, that sport has given me not as just not just to in terms of its discipline not just in terms of what it's done for my character but also for uh, you know the the opportunity it has given me to reach out to back to my community back to uh, people with disabilities and the larger community in Singapore yeah that's really amazing Wei Song I mean how, what an extraordinary dedication you must have there and uh, Shahida, obviously there, it, there is so much dedication, isn't there? And mental focus required uh, for you as an athlete. Can you share some tips on what keeps you motivated? Oh, um, people that I love, uh, my family, my friends, um, even uh, everyone in Singapore uh, who supported me. Um, they give me a lot of encouragement uh, for me to move forward. Um, so um, I just, you know, uh, every time I, I had a bad day or a bad training day or a bad competition day, I always remember that, um, you know, why I started in the first place. And, um, and I always have this motto uh, within me that um, uh, whatever that I do, um, I hope that uh, this will touch the hearts of everyone uh, through my extraordinary feat. Yeah, I can tell you, it's definitely touching a lot of people's hearts, Shahida. Amazing. Now, Wei Sung, you must have a, a similar thing that motivates you. And you've also got a really intensive training schedule. I mean, give us a sense of what a typical week looks like for you. Well, I'd say a, a typical week would include nine sessions of, of swim training and four sessions of gym training. The swim sessions would double up on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. So there's two sessions on those days. And then there's a single session on in between uh, Wednesday and Wednesday morning and Thursday afternoon so that you have that 24-hour uh, gap in, in training time to rest. And you also have Saturday, which we do um, uh, test sets and so on. So altogether, that would include roughly almost 30 hours a week of training. That would be two hours each time in the pool, so that's around uh, uh, that's around two two uh, two hours, sometimes two and a half. So that's roughly twenty you know twenty two hours, and then about yeah, eight hours in the gym. Is extraordinary. Uh, I mean that it just takes yeah. It sounds such a lot when I when I list it out like that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well. absolutely. <laughs> well, hats off to you. You're you're both amazing. We know that you both competed as well at the recent Paralympic Games in Tokyo. 
and uh, Shahida, of course, you were also in, in Rio. Uh, I mean, can you give us a sense of what the atmosphere was like at the games uh, this year in Tokyo? Because, of course, we know it's so different with all the COVID restrictions they had there. What was it like for, for you, Shahida, in the Athletes' Village? Um, definitely, the atmosphere in Tokyo is different compared to in Rio. Um, I mean, uh, in Rio, we had a lot of uh, spectators, both local and um, um, our spectators as well, uh, overseas spectators. So in Tokyo, it's uh, different because of the COVID restrictions. Uh, we do not have any um, spectators at all. Um, so, uh, but um, even with that, I enjoy myself uh, in Tokyo. Uh, the people there, uh, the volunteers, and um, you know, um, and the games organizer organize the games very well. Um, we feel very safe, uh, even with the COVID pandemic. But the volunteers they encourage us, um, and they supported us and makes us feel more safe, uh, not only from COVID, uh, but also from heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion! Oh my goodness! I mean, you've got enough to worry about out there. Now, Wei Sing, moving over to you, we, we know that obviously as Paralympians, both of you are clearly role models to all aspiring athletes. What advice, Wei Sing, would you give to young people with a passion for sport? Well, I would, I would recommend them to really just focus on the fun. And, you know, when, once, once something's fun, you can really find the passion for it because you're going to get that immediate positive um, feedback and vibes. And so the fun should be the most important thing because that's what's going to get you through the tough times of training. That's going to get you through the, uh, the times where you're not sure if you can perform and sometimes you don't perform. That type of, that kind of enjoyment, that kind of joy for the simple act of being in that sport and doing your best and just putting yourself out there on the, the world stage or whatever stage you are, that should be um, in one way mm. the fundamental. Wow, that's, that is amazing. That's, way to, that's yeah, where everything just to have real love and joy from, yeah. for the sport is really crucial, isn't it? Now, sadly, I, I, I really loved talking to you both, but we're running out of time. So I've got one last question for you both. And if you can answer in one word, that'd be fantastic. Let's start with you, Shahida. It's the same question to you both. But Shahida, who or what is your greatest inspiration? Uh, definitely my mom. <laughs> That's a great answer. Wei Sung, who's your greatest? Well, I, I'd, I'd probably say my parents. Parents. That is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Of course, they've all been there for you, both uh, supporting you both as you've grown uh, such, such, to such extraordinary heights to be competing for Singapore at the Paralympic Games. Thank you both for joining us on uh, our program today and for talking about your memorable sporting achievements. It's been a real delight to talk to you both this evening. And thank you for being our special guest for these awards. Well, I've got to get on to the next category now, but weren't they incredibly inspiring? I mean, how amazing were both of those amazing athletes that we've had on our program. The next award for the evening is the Technological Impact of the Year Award. And this is an award that recognizes a company that has identified a problem, a market gap or innovation, and created an effective and successful solution in the form of products or services using innovative technology. Let's take a look at the nominees. The nominees for Technological Impact of the Year are Coventry Enterprises Singapore, Coventry Enterprises Singapore, a subsidiary of Coventry University Enterprises, focuses on designing, delivering, operating and maintaining incident command virtual reality training systems for customers in Asia. Providing the latest technology, innovation and unparalleled service support, Coventry Enterprises Singapore enables its customers, such as Singapore Home Team Academy and Singapore Civil Defence Force, to train effectively even in times of COVID. Rolls-Royce Singapore Microgrid 
Recognizing the demand for clean energy solutions, global power group Rolls-Royce has developed an in-house intelligent microgrid controller solution, which can be deployed in diverse microgrid applications with minimal customization. The intelligent and innovative automation solution helps Rolls-Royce achieve seamless integration of its world-class power products to various microgrid offerings. Rolls-Royce Singapore Hybrid Rail In setting new standards for the future of train systems, Rolls-Royce is repowering diesel multiple unit trains with its low carbon and fuel efficient propulsion system. The new propulsion system integrates modular multi-converters system based on power electronics technology into Rolls-Royce Power Pack. This technology plays a key role in the electrification of the trains and contributes to the company's global commitment to net zero carbon. Scream Technologies Private Limited A pure artificial intelligence company, Scream Technologies is also one of the world's biggest digital behavior aggregators. One Market is the company's flagship solution and is the world's first AI-enabled media exchange. It delivers an optimized end-to-end -end solution that connects the right audience with the right digital destination. Following the COVID-19 outbreak, Scream also launched a real-time tracking tool, Data Natin, to aid in the battle against the virus. And the winner for the Technological Impact of the Year Award is... Once again, a big congratulations to Scream Technologies and Ian Chapman Banks. Wow, thank you. Absolutely tremendous. And I'm particularly proud of being the CEO and co-founder, but kind of the custodian of the company. And you know, 30, 30% or 40% of our staff in the Philippines actually contracted COVID-19. We still have one person in the ICU, which we're, we're helping out, but really the, the COVID-19 track is something I'm really proud of. The reason being is that uh, it's free of charge. It's available to every Filipino, 107 million people, allows you to get treatment fast, allows you to find available beds. But what's even more interesting is since, since we actually launched this, uh, We've been given, uh, we've won a Eureka Award to actually launch this platform in Europe. And uh, with the Singapore government, we're going to be setting up the R&D in Singapore. And as I mentioned before, uh, we'll be opening an office in London next couple of months. So we're tremendously excited about winning this award. We are a tech company, we are an AI company. Uh, and, you know, we, we've, we've got a big base here and uh, we're really looking forward to growing in Europe and uh, growing in London. So absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Full news, Ian, and our heart goes out to you employees there in the Philippines. I hope they're doing better. Well, we are now at the penultimate category for the evening where we will recognize the UK exporter of the year. Uh, I've got my last envelope left. There is yet another award, but this is an award that recognizes a uh, business headquartered in the UK with evidence of exports of British produced products to Singapore. Let's now have a look at the nominees. The nominees for UK Exporters of the Year. Charles International Limited. Charles International Limited has been changing the way people clean for over 30 years. We are experts in developing and manufacturing specialist cleaning products, including drain care and bin care. We continue to expand and develop a successful portfolio of market leading brands across the globe, including exporting to Singapore and Southeast Asia. Tip Tree, Wilkin and Sons. The Wilkin family has been farming at Tiptree, Essex since 1757 and making quality preserves since 1885. We grow a wide range of traditional English fruits and use them to make conserves, condiments and other treats in our nut-free factory by the farm. We received our first royal warrant from George V in 1911 and remain royal warrant holders as purveyors of Tiptree products to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Our products are made to cherished recipes and are free from artificial flavors and colors. 
We inspect and prepare our fruit by hand and then cook in small batches using traditional copper-bottomed pans. Our products can be found in over 60 countries across the world and are available in fine retailers, premium hotels and quality airlines. Tarsier Spirit Tarsier Spirit is a gin distillery founded in 2018 by Tim Driver and Sherwin Acebuche after a backpacking adventure around Southeast Asia where they discovered many ingredients used in Southeast Asian cuisine lent themselves to gin distillation. 10% of their profits are committed to Tarsier conservation in Southeast Asia. Tarsier Gin is now found in 21 markets globally. The nominees for UK drum roll, please. And the winner of the UK Exporter of the Year Award goes to Charles International. Congratulations. Well, well I'm delighted to accept the award from here in the UK. On behalf of the team based in Singapore, headed up by my colleague Rene Chia. They kept the business running throughout the pandemic, keeping the supermarkets stocked with our brands of Buster, Alchemy, Naust, and Max. And not only keeping the sales level, but actually grew the sales uh, by 100% during that time and opened up new markets in Malaysia and Borneo. So uh, uh, thank you to them uh, and thank you to uh, Britcam for, for the award. We could finally hear from you. Uh, you know this is a live uh, program because uh, there are little glitches just like that. Now, we come down to the final category of this evening's annual business awards, and it's supported by the SG UK Partnership. At this point, I'd love to invite back uh, Cara Owen, the British High Commissioner, to introduce this very important category. Cara, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Sharon. And I will try to do this proud and deliver it in exactly the same professional way you have been doing all of the way through. First of all, <clears throat> enormous congratulations to all of this evening's winners. Um, every single nominee, every single finalist made me proud. What an amazing display of business excellence. And it's a real thrill for me to have been invited to announce the final winner in a category that is really dear to our hearts at the British High Commission. As you said, um, we are looking for something that supports the SG-UK partnership. And it's really exciting because we're going to put the voting power into your hands. So uh, I want you please to pay really close attention to our three finalist videos and get ready in a moment to cast your vote for the winner of the UK Impact in Singapore category. For this category, we're looking for organizations that represent uh, what is really special about the relationship between the UK and Singapore. Organizations that have made an impact on Singapore's economy and society, contributing to and strengthening the ongoing relationship between our two countries. Let's have a look at the nominees. The things that we do in, in Singapore and, and our other locations in Asia, particularly along the lines of charitable giving, our involvement in, in diversity and, in, and inclusion, and the, the meritocracy that, that we um, run in, in St James's Place and, and we promote within and outside the organisation, I think fundamentally those are very British values. And I think that's really the, 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 uh, the, the synergy that, that we have with this award. The business model is one which is committed to building long-term value, not short-term profits. So what that means is that we align our interests and the success of the company with working in partnership with clients to build great financial outcomes. I think one thing that St James's Place does really well is learning and development. We provide a lot of opportunities for aspiring and ambitious individuals to establish and advance their career in finance. So for one, we have the Rotational Graduate Programme. It first started in the UK and it has been widely successful and it was introduced to the Singapore office in 2018. So at St James's Place, we want to reduce hierarchy 
and to create a trusted space where thoughts and experiences can be shared. We have the Reverse Mentorship Program where the mentee is a member of the Asia Management Board and the mentor is a junior employee. The junior employee would then be able to provide new thinking and fresh perspectives to foster better cultural understanding. Awards aside, all the, these aspects of, of, our, uh, of our involvement in the community that are, that are important to us, they are fundamentally about uh, us as a, as, a, as a corporation trying very much to be the best version of, of ourselves. That, that is very close to, to well, it's, it's one of our corporate pillars. It's, it's what we believe in, it's what we aspire to do, uh, and it's what we, we believe represents us and, and the aspirations of our clients as well. CUE Limited, as we know it, has been operating globally for a large number of years now and is quite a successful organisation for us and it enables the university to use its skills and expertise around the world in partnership with governments and commercial organisations to deliver excellent, I would believe, engagement with industry and allowing skills to be developed all over the world. Singapore was chosen by Coventry University Group back in 2007 to establish one of our first overseas operations. Working in tandem with the Singapore government and UK Trade and Investment, we set up an operation which supported the soft landing of UK companies into Singapore. Coventry University has long established international experience and particularly in the field of disaster and emergency management and planning, where we have internationally recognised academics and subject experts. In 2007, we set up Coventry Enterprises Singapore as a key development in our international strategy. Working closely with the team in Coventry, we have helped both Singapore Home Team Academy and Singapore Civil Defence Academy in creating numerous local content and training scenarios that are unique to Singapore that allows their security and rescue officers to train and ready themselves to manage and mitigate any type of disaster or incidents in Singapore. We were very proud when the systems that we installed at Singapore Home Team Academy won the regional award for Gov Insider Innovation Award on Best Risk category, which the award ceremony took place at United Nations Regional Headquarters in Bangkok. This activity has been quite a significant contribution to the university's operations and is now quite a major operation for us globally. I'm absolutely delighted to have been shortlisted as part of this awards process. It really is a true testament to the work that our folks have been undertaking in Singapore. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity today to showcase what we do in Singapore. Can I please ask you to recognise our work and vote for us? So Networks plays a really important role with our corporate customers in terms of working with them on their transformation plans. And as a part of that, of course, from an Asia-Pacific perspective, we work very closely with investors here to make sure we can find financing for all of these good initiatives that are being done. It's absolutely vital that we find this level of engagement between the two because none of this works in isolation. From a business perspective, we really bridge the east to the west. And it's all about financing UK uh, companies uh, from investors in Asia Pacific. There's a very deep pool of liquidity available out here and we play a very you know, key role in facilitating that. There's also the role of how we engaging with all of the support functions that are available to companies in the region, in particular here in Singapore. So we have a very frequent dialogue with the British Chamber of Commerce, with the British Trade Commissioners, with the British High Commission, all of which can be there to support British companies that are looking to either export to Asia Pacific or import from the region. So our diversity and inclusion is actually one of the key pillars that um, the JMT, which is the junior management team, focus on to ensure that the purpose is actually embedded in our initiatives. This particular management team actually tries to create a culture that values talent. So I would say that um, quite a number of things happen and change, but one thing that remains consistent is actually the culture of the firm, which makes it a great place for everyone to work in, to be honest, and which is why I'm still here after 14 years. We've been working together with our teams in Asia to support their investing clients 
as they incorporate climate metrics into their investment decisions, as well as collaborating with the British Chamber of Commerce in Singapore to enhance the connectivity between the UK, Singapore and Asia more broadly. As a COP26 partner and sponsor, NetWest is actively supporting the global agenda to maximize awareness and connectivity to transition our economies to net zero. We're extremely honored to be nominated for this award. Whether we win or not, I'm confident that we are on the right path. Wow, what strong and really varied uh, nominations they are. And I can absolutely say hand on heart, knowing all three of the organizations, that they really truly are part of the SG UK partnership adding impact here in Singapore. And so I'm delighted that the choice isn't mine, it's yours. So you'll see the voting options on your screen. Please place your vote for the winner uh, of the UK impact in Singapore category. Let's bring the nominees on the screen so that you can see them again. You have 45 seconds to place your single vote, no cheating. And to count us down, we welcome back Christo and Song Division. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the time you've all been waiting for. We are about to reveal the grandest of winners at the top of the top. It is the final countdown. Are you ready? I don't think you're ready. You're ready. Five, four, three, two, one. As somebody who grew up in the 80s, it's really brilliant to have that song coming back. Thank you, everybody, for your votes. And can we have a drum roll, please? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for the final award, the UK Impact Singapore Award, is... James's place. Such an absolute privilege to be in such fantastic uh, company this evening. Um, massive. Thank you to everybody that's taken part this evening. Thank you to everybody that's voted for us and, and everybody else. And um, it's terrific to see so many winners and so many, so many participants. As a business that's committed to growing sustainably um, and being part of this community, creating great financial futures for all those members of the community, it's terrific to, to, get, that, not, to get that recognition. But it's not possible without really great leadership and a really great team. Thank you to uh, Gary Harvey, to Andy Sumner and to everybody in our leadership team that's really guided us through the last couple of really interesting years. Um, without that, it wouldn't be possible. And finally, my last thank you is a huge thank you to everybody at the British Chamber of Commerce. I think the last few years, you've really pulled this community of British businesses together. And um, yeah. I would have been voting for you because you've done a wonderful job. And thank you. Everybody have a terrific evening. Take care. Thank you. Well done, Joe. Welcome. Back to Sharon Jit. Congratulations to St. James's Place and uh, thank you as well to the High Commissioner Kara Owen and of course you, our live audience, for taking part. I'm told the result was really close. Well, uh, to close off the evening now, I'd like to invite back Christo and Song Division to sing out, out with their hot off the press brand new latest single, 
annual business awards song, a song about our awards. How amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. We'll be hearing about that song in just a second. But before I hand over, I'd like to say a huge thank you once again to partners, Prudential Assurance Singapore, Barclays, Globalization Partners, and all of our distinguished guests for joining us for the British Chamber of Commerce Virtual Annual Business Awards. All the best to you for the rest of 2021. I hope we can see each other in person next year, but in the meantime, it's over to you. Rock and roll, Christo. Thank you, Sharon Jit. Uh, it was, it's been a wonderful evening and, and thank you for having us again. And what a show. Congratulations to everyone who has taken part tonight. But before we do close the show, I'd like to announce the final Lucky Draw prize winner for the evening. This lucky guest will rece receive a two-night stay at the luxury Datai Langkawi. Nestled in the heart of a 10 million year old rainforest, the Datai Langkawi is a captivating destination resort. You will stay in a canopy collection deluxe room and enjoy an inclusive breakfast for two overlooking the rainforest. In fruiting season, you can catch the great hornbill feeding on an old fig tree's bountiful fruits. And the winner is, drum roll please, and can I have my envelope? Thank you very much. The winner is Sally Tan. Congratulations. Well done, you'll enjoy that very, very much. We will be in touch with you to give you your prize soon. All right, and so that's it. Um, I'd like to now, I'm going to get these lyrics up on screen. We've been furiously writing in the background. Um, so listen out for your names. We, I think we pretty much got them all in there. Uh, we're doing a little bit of a uplifting dance song. So if you are home and you're feeling, you know, you've had a couple of wines, do get up and have a little bit of a dance with us. This one will be released on Spotify soon, coming at you soon. Anyway, thank you again to the Chamber for having us. And here's your song. Information screen took it with passion. Customer service provider, it filled had the answers. Diversity, inclusion, a rook could never lose it. Individual contribution, Nicole Hewitt, our champion. Maybe ain't time to do it again. So much success among us, and we're all winning. Took away the start above the year. Sustainability champion SGC loud and clear. Loud and clear. Technology impact screen for number two. You may explore the chance. So great so to great see to you. ABA time to do it again. So much success among us friends. So lift up your glasses and give us a shot. To everyone, especially St. James, St. James. Ooh, you've come St. through James. strong. St. James, oh, ABA time to do it again. So much success among us friends. Among so us lift friends. up your glasses and give us a shot. Let's pretend, show us what it's all about. Show us what it's all about. Lift 
up your glasses. Keep it chip, show us what it's all about. There's your song, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and we're going to play another song to roll you out. And we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed your events. And congratulations again to all the winners. Night of September, love was changing the minds, pretenders while chasing the clouds away. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing as we danced in the night. I remember how the stars stole the night away. Thank you and good night everybody.